One of the most common complaints about the Ducati Multistrada 1200 is the mushy rear brake. But keep watching because we have the fix. We've seen all sorts of crazy methods to try to solve the mushy rear brake problem on the Multistrada, ranging from installing a bleed valve to the ABS pump, which we've tried, to hanging heavy objects from the brake pedal, which we've also tried. We spoke with somebody who was associated with Ducati, someone who wished to remain anonymous, and they explained to us why the rear brake is so problematic. The problem stems from the fact that the catalytic converter sits just below the rear brake lines that run along the outside of the swing arm. Catalytic converters remove carbon monoxide and nitrogen oxides, the things that cause smog and acid rain, and other hydrocarbons by creating a chemical reaction when hot exhaust gases pass through a ceramic honeycomb mesh. When exhaust passes through the mesh, it reduces the unburned hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide by oxidizing them. To do this, they must get hot, really hot. They don't even start to work until about 400 degrees and can get up to 1600 degrees Fahrenheit or about 200 to 875 degrees Celsius. The more pollutants in the exhaust, the hotter the converter's operating temperature. Even though the brake lines are a solid three inches away from the catalytic converter, you can see the problem. As soon as the brake fluid is exposed to enough heat, it doesn't matter what you do. Your brakes will feel mushy until you can install fresh brake fluid. So there we have it. The reason why the rear brake doesn't work, proximity to the catalytic converter. Now, even if you've installed an aftermarket exhaust system or a cat removal connector pipe, the problem will still persist because the brake routing still takes it awfully close to the header pipes. This also explains why the brakes will feel fine after a fresh brake bleed, but will soon go back to mush. If only there was a brake fluid that could deal with more heat. Well, let's take a moment and look more closely at brake fluid. No matter how good your brake system is, moisture and condensation will get into the system and the brake fluid has to take that moisture on. And this is part of what turns brake fluid black. Now you can see how this becomes an even bigger problem if you live and ride in a wet environment. What that means for us is that the problem isn't necessarily the boiling point of the brake fluid, but the wet boiling point. In other words, how well will the fluid perform once moisture is introduced to the system? For example, this typical $5 bottle of fluid has a dry boiling point of about 500 degrees, but the wet boiling point is only 300 degrees. Remember, the lower operating temperature of a catalytic converter is about 500 degrees. Even this fancy racing brake fluid has a boiling point of about 600 degrees. The wet boiling point is better than the basic stuff, but still only 400 degrees. While 600 degrees puts it into the realm of being able to survive the heat of the engine and the exhaust and all that, 400 clearly is not. So what we need to solve this problem is some very expensive brake fluid, as in a single bottle costs about 70 bucks. Castrol React SRF Racing Fluid. Yes, it's spendy by comparison. The biggest issue is that as motorcyclists, we usually buy the smallest bottle we can get away with because even an open bottle sitting on the shelf will absorb moisture just from the air. For example, this high quality racing brake fluid is about $20 for a half a liter. The Castrol is a full liter at $70. So if you have several motorcycles or if you have friends that ride, we recommend maximizing the bottle by flushing the brakes on as many motorcycles as you can get your hands on. We flush the front and rear brakes on several Multistratas and we still have a little bit left over. Anyway, here's the thing. The dry boiling point on the Castrol SRF is lower than the racing fluid by a few degrees at 590. But its wet boiling point is more than 100 degrees better, 520 degrees. Does it work? We wanted to be sure before we would recommend anybody spending 70 bucks on brake fluid. And it absolutely does. We put the React SRF into four different Multistratas ranging from a 2012 to a 2016. The brake feel still degrades over time, but on this particular bike, the rear brake has gone completely untouched for two riding seasons, two years, and the rear brake still feels fine. It's not perfect, but it's good enough to the point that I can lock the rear brake on a whim. For comparison, using traditional brake fluid, we'd notice degraded brake performance in about 500 miles, rendering the lever pretty much useless after about 1,000. Now, your mileage may vary. If you ride in the wet or live in a wet climate, you may still need to bleed them more frequently. So yeah, if you want a functional rear brake, you want this stuff. So here are a few tricks to help speed up your rear brake bleed process. 
we need to pull the caliper off the swing arm so that we can position the bleed valve on top. If we try to bleed the rear brake on the motorcycle, the bleed valve is on the bottom and it's too easy to trap air, or in this case, bad fluid inside the caliper. You're also gonna need to put the bike up on its center stand, and if you don't have a center stand, you're gonna need a rear stand. Next, we need to detach the ABS sensor. Use your eight millimeter socket and ratchet and loosen and remove this bolt. Be careful, there are one to three little spacers that you don't wanna lose. On the right side of the bike, reach in between the wheel spokes and remove the retaining bolt that holds the brake line and the ABS wire to the swing arm. For whatever reason, Ducati or Brembo saw fit to use an 11 millimeter bleeder valve, so you're gonna also need an 11 millimeter wrench. Barely loosen the brake bleed nipple. Be careful not to loosen it so much that the fluid dribbles out. Once the bleeder has been loosened, using the six millimeter T-handle, reach in just in front of the rear sprocket and remove the first caliper mounting bolt. Then use the six millimeter Allen socket and ratchet and go behind the sprocket to remove the second caliper mounting bolt. From the right side of the bike, carefully slide the caliper out from between the spokes then slowly rotate the wheel backwards to get the caliper as high as you can with the bleeder valve as close to the top as possible without putting unnecessary strain on the brake lines or the ABS wire. We've taken to using this old bungee cord wrapped around the grab handle to hold the caliper up while we bleed the fluid. Be sure to watch our video on how to bleed motorcycle brakes to become more familiar with that process. Just remember, with the brake caliper removed from the motorcycle, you cannot test your progress by pumping on the brake pedal. That'll just push the brake pads together and you'll have to pry them back apart before you can reassemble anything. We really hope you've enjoyed this video and for you riders out there that have been struggling with the terrible rear brake on the Multistrada, we really hope this solution works as well for you as it has worked for us. We've included links to the brake fluid, that we use as well as some of the specialty tools that we used and a link to the how to bleed your brakes video in the description below be sure to click like and subscribe for more great content thanks so much for watching and ride well